Hello friends, welcome to another video where we've got some new stamps. I'm calling it Audacity and we've got pesky mice creating mayhem. So if you want to know how this was done, let's have a look at the materials first of all. Starting with the masking sheets, as you can see, I've created masks from the sheets by stamping them and cutting them out. We're also using watercolour card and that's the hot pressed watercolour card for our project. I'm also using the, these new paints that I have from Kirataki and they are lovely. As you can see, lots of glorious colours. I'm mainly using the greens and I think I also use black and white. So that's for the first layer. So to complement those, we've got another prop product from Kurataki, and that's the Zig Clean Colour Markers. You can see there I have a couple of peaches, a neutral colour, a lilac and a red. Also, I've pulled out some greens. We've got dark light, um, a bluey green, uh, just a combination. Of course, use what you have. And also, of course, some browns and some neutral tones. Moving on then to the Versifying Care ink pads, we've got Rainforest, we've got Shady Lane, and of course, Nocturne for the stamping. I'm using a little bit of gesso and you'll see why in a minute or two. I'm also using stickles. This one's diamond, but any stickles will do. I've pulled out a few light coloured soft pastel pencils. Also some gel pens in white, yellow and black. Uh, Posca pens would also suffice. And I have one of those in, in orange. In terms of the brushes, I use this set a lot. It's the Masking Fluid Brush Set and that's just for the gesso. Uh, also the two large brushes from the large set. And uh, optional water, br water brush, uh, you don't have to use that. Now the stamps. First up we have Tree Den, which is the large stem. We have Tree Stem and Hazel, The Witch's Hat, Mo, Mini and Tango. We also have a broomstick from the broomstick set and this lovely star, uh, which is called Burst of Stars. We've got Wizardry, Wands and Spells, Playful Pumpkin and Ickle Pumpkin. That's one from a little set. So lots to look forward to and if you want to convert all of that into something a little like this uh, with the pesky mice getting up, getting up to no good and uh, creating a lot of unexpected magic, just keep on watching. First of all, we've got 10 by 6 inches piece of card. I'm taking out my lovely paints and we're going to use the greens, the white and the black. It's a first layer and uh, what I'm doing is to take away the blank page. I'm just going to take the mid green and have a, a light layer of that all over. And I'm thinking that uh, I want to create light in the centre and a sort of a banky grassy area at the, at the front. So I've moved on to the white and I'm lightening up the centre area. Just like that. These are nice creamy paints, so they're, they mix together well. Now for the sides, um, obviously we're going to put trees, but uh, to give them sort of a, a dark backdrop and to draw in the light. I'm just using the end of my paintbrush to create blobs of paint and the impression of grassy mounds in the foreground. I'm taking the black and I'm darkening up some of those areas. I also carry on with the darker greens to darken the edges. You could of course do this with ink pads but it's fun and quick doing it with paint. Added some more black and you see it's darkened up significantly. So there's the first layer and we'll begin the stamping. So taking uh, the uh, larger tree stem, that's the tree den, and uh, positioning it there. Now you can see that it's not long enough, but we'll fix that. And I'm blending in the bottom there with my finger. And just inking up the end of the stamp and uh, carrying on there at the top. Taking a, a fine black marker and taking away the, the edge there where they meet. So I continue on stamping. Uh, it's just to create a sort of border either side and some kind of context for our little picture. And I stamped a couple of those at the other side, just as before. And now I'm taking the, the skinnier uh, tree stem. I'm covering up 
the, the larger branch with a piece of torn copy paper. And I want this to be lighter so it's a second generation stamp and taking the ink off first of all and so that when it stamps it's quite light. Doing that again and as before linking up the top so we have long tall trees. There you are, drying that off. Now I've numbered these uh, masks one to five. I actually do six in the end up because I do the broomstick as well. So that's the order of the stamping really. And as I said, you stamp that onto the sheets and cut it, the little uh, masks out. I'm taking the nocturne and first of all, number one in the masks is the hat. And I've roughly worked out on the page where I want to place these stamps. So you might see little, little black marks on the page. I'm drawing that off and then placing the mask uh, in place there. If I can get it on, there we are. Now, I'm measuring one and a half inches down and I'm going to mark that with a pencil because that's how um, the size of the mouse stamp. So I know that I'm going to place my books there just at that mark. And this is uh, mask number two. Give it a quick dry and plop that in place. There we are. Next up then we have the pumpkins and what the masks do is that they put the stamping underneath to the to the front so that um, this little uh, stamp will be uh, in, in front of the other pumpkin. Now you can do it the other way around. There's a reason why I do it this way which you'll see but uh, that's number three in place and then number four is the larger pumpkin. So when the masks are removed, the little one will be in front. But as I say, you could reverse it if that's that's what you prefer. So number four in place. Nearly. That's it. So finally, then we have the other stack of lovely books and uh, for this to work, I'm stamping it slightly uh, over the top of the uh, first stamp so that uh, the first group of books have a flat edge to rest on and look as if they're all one uh, group of books when the uh, masks are removed. And there's my final mask. Now, the reason for the masking is that I'm going to do some stamping and I don't want that stamping to go over what I've just place down but before we do that I'm going to put a couple of the mice in place just to build the picture up and um, give me a sense of what's happening. <laughs> so here we are, here he goes, one of his little paws on top of the book and the other one holding up the hat, the magic hat. That's the first one and now I decided to put the fabulous uh, broom stamp across that and of course uh, it'll be in the background because it's being stamped across a mask and I, the idea is I want one of the other little mice to balance on the end of this and that's where I've created that um, additional sixth mask just for the end so that that's protected from the additional trees that are coming later. Now mouse number two and these are great little stamps, aren't they? They can do all sorts of things. And I was uh, just had this in my head that I wanted to do this composition. And uh, it's it's not easy, but when you know how, it's 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 fine. Now I'm taking the lovely starburst or burst of stars, and I love this stamp because it creates such magic. And I'm placing that um, across the broom because that's, I think, where most of the magic is going to emanate. Now, a lot of these will be covered over, but it's given me a sense of the picture at this stage and I'll re-stamp them later. Um, but uh, it's uh, a wonderful stamp. Next up, we have the hazel tree. And this is a lovely uh, stamp as well because it's got that sort of craggy um you know, look, it's not a perfect tree and it, it, it's uh, a lovely one to use in a Halloween picture. 
So I've taken uh, the first uh, uh, ink off and it's a second generation stamp. So I've stamped it out first on the on the copy paper and then uh, stamped it on so it's nice and pale, a bit like I did with the trees. And next I'm doing first generation stamping this time to bring it more forward. And I think I do one more and I mask off the bottom because I want it a bit lower down. And that means these trees will be in the background. Oh, and I'm doing some branches as well to the top because I felt that that was needed. So there we are. That's the trees in place and a couple of the mice. Now I'm removing the masks to reveal what's underneath. And don't worry, I'll be fixing the pumpkins. But first, before I do that, I'll put the third mouse because he's a very important mouse because he's the one that is drawing up the magic and particularly in relation to the little pumpkin, which you'll see later. And so we've got the, th the three of them in place. Now, as I said, we're going to fix the pumpkins. And this is a trick if um, when you stamp something and it's obscured by the background underneath, in order to neutralise it, um, just very lightly paint in a, a, a layer of, of gesso. That's the first one. And then I'm just masking off the, the little one, giving it a dry and lining up the stamp again and stamping over the top will bring it back, uh, particularly to the foreground for colouring purposes. So I'm going to repeat that with the little one. And there you are. Both of them have been restored. Next, it's the colouring and I'm taking my Zig uh, Clean Colour Markers. And this isn't very complicated at all. It's really just taking a dark green, a mid-toned green and a paler uh, bluey green. And uh, the furthest away from the light, now the light's in the centre, so uh, the trees will have their darkest edge farthest away from the light. And I'm now taking that mid-tone and finally the paler one and just graduating that uh, colour in a very, uh, a very basic and understated way. I'm also using that uh, bluey green colour, which is a, a nice colour. Um, to give the impression of background trees there and I'm building the trees that we stamped it up with a mid-tone green there and I sort of liked I liked the extra colour of this and I decided to extend it out a little bit and not have the centre quite so bright so I'm taking that bluey green again and I'm extending it out a bit and in a minute or two, I take the water brush and just blend that until I'm happy with it, really. And that adds some extra colour, as you can see. So that's the background complete. And now we'll start with the colouring. So I'm taking the same colour. It's that sort of bluey, pale green. And I'm just giving a, a basic uh, layer, first layer to the books and now I'm taking uh, a neutral grey green colour to add in some shadow and depth and I'm basically going to build these up um, my, and this is a like a a creamy neutral colour which I felt would um, warm, it, warm them up a bit and I'm also adding that to the background I don't know why, I just felt um, it would uh, it would liven things up a bit I felt I just wanted to do it. <laughs> so there it is. Then taking a darker green and, and building up the shadows. Now, ultimately with the books, um, I felt I wanted them to be sort of muted uh, reds and greens, but not too bright. So as you can see there, I'm introducing peachy colours into the mix. And now I'm darkening that up with the red pen. But all the while I'm blending and what, what you'll see in a minute is I don't want it to be very bright red. So how I'm um, dulling it down and making it tone in with the ambient light of the picture, I suppose, is by adding green on top of it so that it's more of a, a sort of a dull red rather than a bright red. And then I'm just taking um, the peachy colours and doing the edges. 
So next uh, we'll do the hat and I wanted this to be um, sort of a, a, a bright leathery type um, look and so that would be browns and oranges and sort of, um, sort of amber colours. Now the problem I have with um, the lovely markers that I have is that I don't actually have an orange <laughs> which is a bit sad when you're doing a Halloween picture. So what I'm doing is using the colours that I do have to sort of mix a type, uh, an orangey amber colour. So it does start off um, quite bright, but um, hopefully, as you see, as I build up the layers and blend them into each other, because these pens are great for um, blending. Um, and you can see I'm doing dark at the sides and then paler colours in the centre. There we are. And what I'll do with the hat is I'll keep building up the browns and the darker colours until I get the right tone. And I also add in uh, black to uh, put back the stamping um, and bring back, you know, the little the little folds um, that uh, the stamp has. And I'll bring that back at the end to make it more dimensional. There you are. It's a bit darker. And I just really continue building that up until I'm happy uh, and it goes a bit darker still. There you are. I've added some yellow into it, I think, and that made a difference and some black as well. So doing the same thing to the lovely bottom of the broom. This time I'm using my brown toned markers and adding some purple shadow in as well, which is always a handy colour to have. And now with the pumpkins, um, and you'll see the difficulty I have, I don't have an actual true orange, but I do have peachy pinky colours. So I'm starting off with those and hoping for the best. Um, and I'll introduce various colours to mix in to sort of uh, take away the, the, the happy colour. I don't really want a happy colour in a Halloween picture, if you know what I mean. I want them to be more muted and a bit dulled. So I'm trying the red now and I think I put purple in it as well. And you can see it's a whole mix of colours. Um, and I just keep going until it, it, it looks the way I want it to look. Um, and taking my yellow gel pen to fill in the eyes to make them look a bit more lit up from within. And then uh, adding the stems, of course, and a little bit of um, contrast with the, with the dark green. Now at this stage I gave in and said I want a real orange. <laughs> so I lifted my Posca pen and dabbed it about just to um, give the impression of bright colour and I think it helped, hopefully. And I have ordered an orange in these pens. There we are, that's more like it. So next I'm taking the pastel pencils. This one is a cream colour and also use white. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to add in smoky magic. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. I just want um, a smokiness, um, sort of uh, it rising up around the mice and around the pumpkins. And all this is uh, are wiggly lines. They're just little wiggles and um, building them up and then blending them with my finger, like little snakes. And the more you... Um, uh, brighten the centre of the snakes and then um, rub them, they become smoky. Uh, and I'm doing this around the broomstick in particular because I want it to look as though there's magic coming up um, and that the little mice have um, inadvertently <laughs> caused trouble by uh, maybe, uh, cr you know, creating a spell from the books and then everything is going crazy. So that's that's what I had in my head that I wanted. Um, I wanted it to be full of energy and full of mischief. And I'm taking my yellow now at this stage and adding that into the smoke just to make it more Halloweeny, and giving that sort of murky, murky light when you add yellow. That's what the, that's the effect of that. And so I just carry on making um, squiggles in white and cream and yellow. 
and blend blend them with my finger till I am happy with how smoky that it all looks. And I, this is really fun actually doing this just freehand. So next up I'm covering up the um, little pumpkin and I'm adding in again the stars uh, and back to the start where I wanted them round the broomstick and I'm covering up the hat again because I want them to go behind the hat so if the mask is there you can make you can actually this is a great stamp because you can change direction with it it doesn't have to be as it is on the stamp and I wanted the sort of magic to flow up a bit like the the smoky snakes <laughs> so um I'm not explaining this very well but um there you are so lots of magic and in order for them to pop what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill most of them in with the white gel pen and I know you're thinking that's very laborious why would you do that you could maybe heat emboss them with white embossing powder and you could try that but I just didn't want to risk it because sometimes you get the the um the paper, the powder sticking to the picture so I just filled them in in white and there they all are already completed it doesn't take that long actually and I enjoy all all those little things Next up then I'm just adding little dots of yellow as I usually do just to perk it up a little bit and finally now that it's been mounted onto cream and black card I'm adding the sparkle particularly on the edges of the book because the light is coming from the background and um, although the sparkle will be magic sparkle I also want the hat for example to light up from the back so that's why I'm putting it all around the hat and the sides of the mice and I've also put little dots of yellow on the hat as you can see there and it's finally come together I think and uh it looks, it looks like the mice are having fun at least. So I hope you'll have a go and I hope it gives you ideas. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, um, take very good care of yourselves until next time. And above all, get creating, be brave and enjoy the adventure.